Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in City Skyline 2. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to Control Panel, open it, go to Manage 3D setting, and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS, uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring, uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So it's pretty messy, you will see it. Uh, first of all, I want to mention all the eye parameter inside of this game are very very intense on your resources uh, it's not well optimized so i don't recommend to use any high parameter it's pretty crazy you don't really have also any uh, upscaling technique when you go in uh, advanced you can technically change it for fsr 1.0 but honestly you don't want to use fsr 1.0 getting a lot of artifact and stuff like that I hope they're going to patch it, honestly, and add like DLSS or FSR 2.1 or some frame generation uh, from Radeon or uh, NVIDIA because this game really needs optimization. So let's start with the graphic parameter. First of all, screen resolution, make sure that you're playing native, so depending on your monitor, and also make sure that you have the proper amount of Hertz. By default, mine was at 60 Hertz, so a bit weird. So make sure that you're selecting the proper amount of Hertz. Make sure also you're playing full screen. After that, for the V-Sync, I'm not using V-Sync, but again, you're not playing Valorant or CS2. You can use it, use it if you want. Uh, it will add a little bit input lag, but it will remove your tiering. You can also use other technology like G-Sync and FreeSync if you want to sync your monitor with your GPU. After that, depth of field. This one is really weird. You have also a, a quality setting uh, for depth of field. Uh, it's tanking your my fps this normally the depth of depth of field you're losing like two percent three percent in any game this one i was at eight percent so i really recommend to go with disable with this global graphic quality it will change at custom because you're going to change uh, those parameters over there dynamic resolution you don't want to use that disable it you don't want your uh resolution changing on the fly sometimes the game looks blurry sometimes it's good uh i prefer to just statically change all your parameter and make sure it's always running well so after that, you have the anti-aliasing quality. You have a couple of options. I recommend FXAA. It's a good basic anti-aliasing. You will gain 6%. You can also adjust it if you want. Uh, you have a couple of options over there. Honestly, just use simple uh, for City Skyline to optimize your uh, graphic setting. I will show you one graphic parameter that it's really important to use advanced. But for, for the majority of it, it's pretty uh, good when you change it. Cloud quality setting, I recommend to go with low. If I compare high to low, you can expect 7% boost in your FPS. I don't recommend to disable. The game looks very flat without it. Fog quality, I recommend to go with disable. And volumetric quality setting, go with disable. A nice 20% boost over there. Pretty huge. Ambient inclusion quality, this one is a bit weird. On my 2070 RTX, I didn't see any difference between low and high. So I can run the setting at high. Maybe it's a bug. On my 4090... Not too sure, again, if it's placebo or not, but I have like 1% different for each bracket. Uh, but I feel ambient inclusion is bug right now because normally ambient inclusion, you're getting a nice like 6, 7, 8% depending on the game and when you go high to low. For sure, if you disable it, uh, you will gain a lot of FPS, but the game looks very flat without it. So I don't recommend to do that. So just do some testing for this one. 
Global illumination quality, go with low, and after that, go in advance. So, 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 where is it? Sorry, guys. It's over there. So, race step, I think, by default, will be at 64 or 32 when you put low, something like that. Make sure that you go at the lowest over there, at 16. It will really help, honestly. You can gain a nice 10% boost in your FPS with global illumination quality. So, do that for this one. Reflection quality, I recommend to go with low. It's not a huge deal in this game. You will not gain a lot of FPS like when you're static in the game. But when you're moving and stuff like that, it will stabilize your FPS a lot. So for that, go with low. Depth of field quality, go with disable. Motion blur, you don't really want to use that in like in any game. Maybe some racing game. But just remove that. You will have a better and clear visual. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with low. I to low, you can expect 12% boost in your FPS. If you disable, uh, I think it's 15. But again, the game looks very flat without shadow. So I don't recommend to do that. Terrain quality setting, water quality setting, honestly, 1% difference between low and medium, so definitely go with medium for this one. Level of detail really depends if you have like a decent comp computer, normally medium is fine, but if you're playing on an old laptop with a 1050, something like that, definitely go with low with level of detail, but you will see a big difference in the visual, so that's why I recommend to go with medium. Animation quality, you just have two parameters, I recommend to go with medium, it will help a lot to stabilize again your FPS, and the last one is your texture quality. You have four different brackets. If you have six gig and more of VRAM on your GPU, go high. Four gig at medium, three gig at low, and if you have less than three gig of VRAM on your GPU, go with very low. So this is pretty much it, guys. I will tell you right now, the game is not well optimized. I hope they're gonna <laughs> add some upscaling technique and also will just optimize straight up the game. If you have any question, just, just post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.